We're going to talk about caching on Circle CI. What this does is essentially store files that you can reuse in your jobs later, which helps to significantly improve the speed of those jobs. Now, this is typically used for caching dependencies, but this is a general caching solution. So let's take a look at how to create this cache. We have our CircleCI 2.0 configuration file, and we have two key steps here. We have restore cache and we have save cache. And in between the restore cache and the save cache, we have a step which installs the dependencies for our application, which is a Python application and we're using pip. Now take note of the order here that we have the restore cache in front of the step where we're installing our dependencies and we have save cache at the end. Now let's take a look at the save cache step because this is where you are going to configure what gets cached. And the first thing that you need to create a cache is to create a cache key. So our key has two parts here. The first part is a literal string. It's just a little versioning string and we'll find out why that's good to have later on. And then here we have these double braces with some text inside and this text will be evaluated and the results of that evaluation will be a string that represents our entire cache key. The next part is the paths. Once the key has been generated, we can tell it which paths that we want to be associated with that that key and all of the folders and all of the subfolders that are in the path which you provide will be saved and stored under that key name. So once we have this key and it's been created and the files have been stored, we can pass that same key to the restore cache step. And if that key exists, it will pull down all of the files and it will place them exactly where they were when the cache was saved. So that's the idea behind the caching. So let's take a look at the caching in action. We have three jobs that we're going to look at. The first one doesn't have any cache and we can see that by looking at the restore cache section. This is the cache key that we have. It's not exactly the same as the one in the example, but this is the one for this job and no cache was found for this cache key. So nothing's going to happen. It's going to move to the next step. And since no cache was restored, our pip command is going to look at our requirements. It's going to install all of the dependencies as we can see here, and then it's going to move on to the next steps. And our next step here is the save cache section. So we're going to open it up. We're going to see that our key has been evaluated evaluated here. It was looking at our requirements file and it generated this checksum. And it also pulled the virtual environment where all of our dependencies were installed. So now we have a cache that has been created based on the current state of our requirements file and our virtual environment folder. Let's look at what happens when we use that same key in the next job. So here's the next job. We're going to look at the restoring cache section and we'll see now it did find a cache. It even tells us which previous job it found that cache in. It found it in job 11, which was the previous one. And it's using the same key because our requirements file did not change. The size was 16 megabytes and it tells us where it restored the cache to. And that took all of one second, whereas installing all of the dependencies from scratch took about 38 seconds. So now that the cache is restored, let's take a look at our pip install step, which only took two seconds because all of the requirements have been met and we can see that these requirements are already satisfied. So we don't need to download those all over again, it's ready to go. Now we can take a look at our save cache section and we'll see that skipping cache generation is what happened here. The cache already exists for that key and since these keys are immutable and they cannot be written to again, it's just skipped and we move on to the next one. 
Let's take a look at our final job here where we have updated the cache key. If we go to this restore caching step, you'll see that we have incremented the version key. And this is what you want to do when you need to expunge or completely clear out old caches. That's why this version key comes in handy because it invalidates anything following it. So even though this checksum is the same as our previous one, since the entire key is evaluated and this version number has been incremented, the entire previous cache is invalidated and we're going to go through the process of creating a completely new cache. And you can see that once again, it took about 36 seconds to install everything. And if we go to the saving cache section, this key does not exist. So it's going to go through the saving cache strategy again, and it's going to save everything in the virtual environment folder. So that's really cool. And another thing to note is that you can add multiple paths to your save cache section. So this key can be representative of multiple paths that you want to save. And also you can use save cache and restore cache multiple times within your config. So if we wanted to have another save cache section that has a completely different key that is generated based off of a different file, maybe we also have a package.lock. We're doing some stuff with NPM and JavaScript, we could do another save cache section, which points to our package.lock file, and it points to our node modules folder. So caching on CircleCI 2.0 allows you to use a key that is an identifier for the state of a folder or folders. And when that key is pointed to in the restore cache section, we will pull down all of those files that we saved from a previous job so that they can be reused much faster in your jobs. And this is really valuable with dependency caching. Some people even use it to cache their source code, but it's very flexible and it's very versatile and you can use it in a lot of other different ways. If you enjoyed the video, do hit that like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you can get more cool videos about CircleCI. If you want to come hang out with the community, you can join us at discuss.circleci.com. And that's going to be it. Thanks for watching.